Welcome back. We continue our study on impartial games. So, in this session we start discussing the Sprague Grundy theory of impartial games. For this we need to introduce the graphical games. We have already seen how these uh, graphical games look like, but let us recall them once again. So, a game consists of graph g is equals to x f. What is x here? x is the set of all positions. f is a function that gives for each x in x a subset of possible positions to move. called followers. So, I will explain in a while. Then here further we need to say that if f x is empty then x is terminal position. the start position is x naught which is an x. The player 1 moves from x naught. Then of course, as we have been discussing players alternate Okay. At position x, the player chooses some y in fx. the player confronted with empty set fx loses. So, what did we say? The game actually there are set of some positions which are denoted by x and f is specifying once you are at a position x what are all the positions it will lead to. Suppose if a player makes some move the game moves to some position and all those positions which can be moved from x are given by f x. For some position x if f x turns out to be empty then x becomes a terminal position. Okay. The game starts with an initial position called x naught and at that position the player 1 makes his move. Then the players alternate their moves and it means that at a position if the current position is x the player who is making a move he will choose some move which leads to a position which has to be something from f x. If a player confirms, confronts with an empty set f x he becomes a loser. In other words, we are in a normal play. Let us see some examples 
we will start with a very simple game called chomp which we have discussed already we take a simple setup of this. So, let us take only 2 by 2 square this is the poisonous. So, initial position is this this is nothing but our initial position. Now, from here there are what are what are all the possible it is possible that it leads to so this is occupied it can also move to this position or it can go to this position. Now, once in this position, so it can go to two possibilities. Or it can go to this and from here it goes to this is going to be a terminal position and from here also it will come to terminal position. Now, we would I would like to point out that this is same as this position. So, in other words this is nothing but this. So, in a sense from here one position is this and this position is this. So, so if I rewrite this position this game what we have is the simpler. So, let me write it again here this is the initial position from here it can go to this and from both we will reach to a terminal position. And from here it can lead to this position or it can lead to this position. So, this is the game. So, in this setup what the set x is nothing but these positions there are 4 positions possibility 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 positions. And f of for example, this is nothing but there are 3 things. Three positions. So, this is basically how this impartial games can be described by graphs. So, now one can think about we can work out variety of examples. For example, if we take subtraction game the takeaway games 5 coins if I take and let us take a player can remove 1, 2 or 3 coins at any point of time. In this case the 5 is a position is a start position and from 5 one can go to 4, from 4, from 5 I can go to 3, from 5 I can go to 2. Now, from 4 let me put this from 4 I can go to 3, from 4 I can go to 2, from 4 I can also come to 1. From 3 
I can go to 1, from 3 I also can go to 2, from 2 I will come to 1 and from 1 it is a terminal position there are no more you can remove it. So, this is a example. Okay. We are interested in which are called progressively bounded. So, what it means from any position the length of any path is finite. That means, if you start with some position some initially and then the players are alternatively making a, their choices, then look at how long it takes to the terminal position. So, which is basically known as the length, the maximum possible there that is the length and that length has to be finite. If we look at this thing from 5 I can go to 4, from 4 I can go to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1 this is in first one step, two, three, four steps I can go to the terminal positions. So, the path here is 4 and we want that path the length of that any path should be finite. So, such games are known as progressively bounded. So, we are interested in only those games. Okay. So, in fact it also immediately implies this also implies that the graph has no cycle. So, if there is a cycle for example, from a position if it goes to another position from this it goes to another position and then it comes and then it, it goes there then what happens that it can cycle along this path and in such a case it, it will have a infinite path and we do not want this one. So, no cycle is a important property of these graphical games which are progressively bounded we are interested only in this thing. So, we consider progressively bounded impartial games. So, let me recall what is an impartial game here. In an impartial game the choices available the positions available to players are same that means you cannot distinguish that this position belongs to only player 1 or player 2 like in chess. So, that is important we have already discussed about this. So, we are only looking at such games. Now, I would like to introduce Sprague Grundy function. So, Sprague Grundy function is defined on x which takes non negative integers. can take any integer which is defined inductively as follows g of x is nothing but minimum of n greater than or equals to 0 such that n not equals to g y for y in f x. It is exactly like what we have defined earlier when we are proving the NIM game. 
So, the g x is the smallest integer which is not equals to any of this z y and y is in f x. So, in fact this also uh, this is defined in a recursive fashion. So, we need to the way we have to introduce this definition is recursively first we have to go to the terminal nodes and start defining what exactly is the terminal node and for them the Sprague Grundy value we have to define and then inductively we have to do it. For example, if x is a terminal position. then g x has to be because there is no follower, no following position from x that means f x is non empty that means this set consists of all integers and minimum of them is going to be 0. So, for a terminal position g x is going to be 0 and then we have to define inductively. Once we know the terminal positions, so go to the previous ones the position that go previously and then you go on recursively we will start with some examples. So, how to define this? In fact, uh, I would also like to say that g x is nothing but the minimum excluded value which we have defined earlier of g y y in f x. This if you recall the proof of this NIM game and the strategy of it we have introduced this max function there. So, g of x is nothing but the max of g of y y in f x. So, this is now we will try working out how to define of it. So, let us say let us take a simple game which will take this is the position that it takes this there, there is another position here and from here let us say it goes to here and from here I can go to here from here I can go to here, from here I can go to here, from there I can go to this and this. So, this is basically the a simple game where this thing. So, what are n positions here? So, recall the n and p positions. So, these are the terminal nodes that means after this no more move. So, therefore, the if a player is already here that means that person he cannot make any more decisions. So, he will be loser. So, therefore, this is a p position these two are p positions. The previous move how for example, from here I have come to here. So, therefore, this is going to be n position and to this I have come from here. So, therefore, the, these two are going to be n positions and this is going to be p position and this is going to be n position. So, this we have already worked out earlier. So, we will this thing. Now, all the terminal positions have g x 0. So, this these two are the terminal positions so that they will have 0 value here. Now, these two are going to be 0. So, this position if you look at it this position its followers are only 0 here the g value of these two positions are 0. So, therefore, this position will have a value 1. Now, look at this position from this position the followers are this and this. So, it takes 0 and 1 here. So, the minimum excluded value here is 2. Now, you look at this position here the followers for this position is 1 and 2 the minimum excluded value is 0. And when I take here the followers for this position are 2, 0 and 1. So, the minimum excluded value is 3. 
Now an interesting thing here is that all the p positions here have 0 value. So, if you recall the NIM game and the strategy there we also have the same thing. So, in fact you can see that if the Grundy value of any position is 0 they are going to be p positions and for n positions the Grundy value is going to be different from this. So, this is an interesting thing. In fact, what we are really going to do is essentially follow the strategy of NIM here. Okay. So, now I need to introduce another important aspect here which is known as adding games. So, if, uh, for this let me recall this NIM game. So, if you take the NIM game what we have really is that so NIM game let us say there are 2 heaps. So, at any point of time when a player is making a move he can remove the coins from any of these 2 heaps. So, if I only take one this thing people the players have to alternatively remove from this one. When there are 2 heaps at any point of time the player has a choice of choosing which heap and how much to choose. So, this is essentially the idea of this adding games. So, let me go. So, let us take there are 2 games x1, f1, x2, f2. Now, we are interested in let us say g, g1 this one and g2 this one we are interested in defining what is called G1 plus G2. This I will write it as G of course, the corresponding graph structure is given by X at the F. So, what is X? This X has to specify all possible positions. If you go back to this NIM game, what are the positions? The sizes of the heaps in this heap and how many are there in this heap. Therefore, it is like the possibilities of this and possibility thus of possibilities of this heap. There are two heaps and all possible combinations of it. So, in, a, in other words this x is nothing but x1 cross x2 the combination of all possible positions. Now, how do we define f? Again the idea comes from here itself in the NIM game itself. Suppose if at any point of time if the NIM size let us say let us say here it is 5 and here it is 7. So, from 5 and 7 what are all the possible positions it from I can remove from 5 this any number let us say 3, 7 is possible or it could be 5, 4. So, I remove either from here or from here. So, in other words suppose if I have a position x1 comma x2 there I need to look at what are the positions that can be moved in this game. Okay. Suppose it goes to y1 x2, where y1 is in fx1 or f1 x1. This is possible, or it can go to x1 comma y2, where y2 is in f2 x2. So you look at the possible moves from this game and this game, and then we need to do it. So, formally let me write it this one this f 
x1 x2 is nothing but so this will be f1 x1 cross x2 these are all the possible positions possible and not only this it also can take x1 cross f2 x2. So, these are all the positions possible. So, in particular we can actually make it uh, multiple uh, these things suppose let us say games are g1 x1 f1 g2 x2 f2 let us say there are n games I define g to be which is g1 plus g2 plus gn this here x is defined as x1 cross x2 cross xn and f x1 x2 xn is nothing but f x1 cross singleton x2 this is one and then union x1 cross f x2 cross like this up to singleton x1 singleton x n minus 1 cross f x n. So, this is the f these are all the positions that are possible from any position of x1 x2 xn. Now, we need to define the terminal positions. So, terminal position is nothing but it is a position where in any of the games from there you cannot move to any other position in any of the games. So, that means that will be simply a Cartesian product of the terminal positions in the individual games. So, the terminal positions nothing but the Cartesian product. of terminal positions in the individual games. Okay. So, once we define this thing the what we will see in the next session is how to find the Sprague Grundy function of this thing. Sprague Grundy function G of G and I also want to understand the Sprague Grundy function of the game 1, game 2, game G and how they are related. So, we are going to find a relation between these, these things that is basically the Sprague Grundy theorem, which we will prove in the next session. Okay. We will continue this in the next session.